And take a look at a legal problem called group anagrams. So given an array of strains, um, and then group the anagrams together, you can return the answer in any order. An anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase, typically using all the uh, original letters exactly once. So you can see that um, we have an example. Let's say we have, um, in this case, let's say we have eat. Right. Basically, eat is a anagram of P, right? Because we can use exactly the same letters and, and then rearranging them to form a different word, right? And then we can also form another word eight, right? We can basically re rearrange eat or T to eight, right? So you can see that these are anagrams, so we group them together. And then what we do is that we return a list of list string, right? So in this case, we have eight eat. T as one um, group, and then we put that in one list. And then bat in this case is one group, and then those two words are, is also one group. So you can see that uh, if we rearrange those letters, we can be able to form uh, form a different word, right? In this case, uh, nat can form to 10, right? But these words, uh, or these letters cannot be able to form those words, right? So in this case, we group them into one uh, one list. And then if there's a situation where we have an empty, or in this case, a strain that's uh, basically have no letters, so we can just uh, group them together by itself, right? Um, so in this case, the constraint is that um, each strains um, can uh, only contains just lowercase English words. And uh, you can see that there could be a situation where we have string is empty like this, right? Um, so how can we solve this problem? Um, so to solve this problem, all we can do this is we can be able to sort this string, right? So to know if this is an anagram of this, right? Or those two are, uh, in this case, are the same group of anagram. Uh, we can be able to sort the string, right? Into um, alphabetical order, right? So in this case, if I sort eat, in this case, I can do it this way, right? I can be able to sort this, this string right here into AET. Right, and I can also sort T into AET, right? And I can also sort eight into AET because they're all in um, alphabetical order now. So what I can do is that I can be able to create a table, right? And basically get each and every single of those strings. When we sort it, right? We sort it uh, into AET and then we just add those strings onto the table, right? So in this case, we have eat, right? We have T and we have eight as part of this key, right? As part of this, uh, anagram group, right? So this is what exactly I did. So basically you can see here, um, I have a function, right? And then in this case, I have a table and this is the key. This is the list of strings. Um, and then we basically group all the anagrams together, right? And then basically I iterate all the strings that we have uh, in the string array. For each string, we basically sort the string to, the, to get the key, right? We have a function called generate key. We basically convert it into a character array and we sort it, return it in uh, as a key, right? In this case, we sort a version, right? So in this case, we, we sort the character array and then we turn the AET as the key. So then we check to see if we have it in our table. If we, uh, if we do, we just um, basically get it and then add it onto our list. If we don't, we just create a list, add the current string, right? Onto the list. And then we basically create that spot or add the current list onto the onto the table, right? We're at the current row onto the table. So basically you can see that um, at the end, we're just returning all the um, all the values that we have in our table, right? So basically these are the values, right? We have a list, bunch of list of uh, strings. So we return that. And then at the end, you can see that this will give us a time complexity of uh, n times k log k, right? Because here you can see we're basically iterating all the strings that we have in the input, right? And then for each iteration, we basically have to sort, right? In this case, K is basically the size of the string. So we have to sort it and sorting is gonna be uh, K log K, right? For this, the time complexity. So in this case, you can see the time complexity is gonna be N log, uh, N times K times log K, right? So how can we be able to optimize the time complexity for this one? So what we can do instead is we can be able to optimize this part, right? Instead of sorting 
what we can do is we can actually be able to uh, convert it into an array, right? So in this case, we know that if we use a table, right, in this section, the generate key section, if we convert that into a table, so for example, if I want to know if this string is a, uh, in this case, if we rearrange the characters in the string, is this the same as this, right? Or in other words, if the anagram of two words is the same, right? In this case, what we can do is we can be able to use a table, right? Because in this case, if I iterate this string and for each and every single string, I have a table, like for character A, it contains one time, for character E, it contains one time, for character T, it contains one time, it's also gonna be the same for the string T, right? T has a character contains one time, E contains one time, A contains one time. So what we can do is that we can be able to generate a key and we can be able to based on this, right? So this is what exactly I did. So basically the upper section is pretty much the same, but what I did here is that I um, changed the generate key function. And you can see that basically I use a table to keep track of all those uh, characters, like how many characters, um, uh, number of times each character appear in the string. So I iterate the string, right? And then for each and every single character, I increase the number of times it appeared, right? Uh, by one. And then in this case, what we're gonna do is that after, for example, like you can see uh, this string right here, right? It's gonna be A appear one time, E appear one time, T appear one time. And then because in this case, the table has a size of 26. So other characters like C, probably appear zero times, B appears zero times and so on, right? So we're just going to iterate the table like 26 times, right? Or in this case, yeah, the table has a size of 26, right? So we basically use a string builder and we generate a key, right? So basically, you know, we know that um, in this case, A has an index of zero, B has an index of one, C has an index of two, right? So we iterate that number of times to generate a key. And then we use a, uh, in this case, a symbol, right? It doesn't have to be this symbol. It can be anything um, to separate them, right? Because there could be a situation where we have like, um, where we have a situation where we have an example like, you know, like 11 number, 11 times of A, right? Where A times 11 in the string, right? We can have a string like A all the way, maybe a hundred times, a thousand times or something. And then there's B, and then C, right? So there could be a situation where we have that, but in our table, right? It will, um, we have A maybe like 100 times, B 100 times or 10 times or something, right? So in this case, you can see that there's a zero. So we need something to separate them. Otherwise there could be a situation where we have two strings are the same, right? Have the same key, right? So it's all about how we generate the key uh, for this question. And once we generate the key, we basically convert the string builder to a string. And then at the end, we return that. And then we're just going to see if this key exists in our table. If it does, we add it to the to the list. If uh, we'll group them in, in, in the list. Um, otherwise, we're just going to create it, add it to the list, and then uh, create that row in our table, right? At, at the end, we're basically just going to return the, uh, the list of strings. Okay. So basically the time complexity for this one is going to be big O of n log k because in this case, we're basically iterating all the strings that we have. And then for each and every single string, right, we basically just doing a, um, in this case, we're basically just going to create a key, right? Generate the key by iterating the, the entire string. But there could also be a situation where k is actually less than 26. So in this case, there could be a situation where we have big O of, um, n times k or big O of n times 26, right? So whoever is bigger, right? So in this case, this is how we solve this problem, uh, group anagrams. So thank you for watching.